Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending. Uh, we're here to welcome Philip Bueller, who will be talking to us about OpenBSD and pa OpenBSD VMM and Packer. Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope it's not too early on a Sunday morning after the social event. It's always a bit of a problem having a talk in this slot. And I see it's not that many people, but hopefully on the stream and the recording later on. I uh, will reach out for enough people who are interested in that. Uh, only quick introduction about the company, like you can read all that, and we have been founded in 2000, and we are doing cloudy things even before the term cloud was ever coined. So that's about that. Uh, and myself, I'm doing Unix administration for, well, just around or a little bit more than 25 years. So who, who is already using uh, Packer? Oh, that's... <laughs> who knows what Packer might be is? Okay, that's a bit more people, okay. Thanks. So um, the major thing, every, everybody wants to have virtualization and segmentation and running around with their laptop, having half the infrastructure on it. Um, all the hypervisors have basically the least common denominator, and that's having kind of a box or image file where you have a raw disk with your installed system, some metadata about how many CPUs, RAM, usage, whatever. And apparently, um, it's like XKCD story. Oh, we have 14 standards, let's invent the 15th. <laughs> so, Every hypervisor out there has its own metadata format, but basically it's always the same stuff, just packed a little differently. And that's the, the first thing you, you have to address if you want to do some automation in that area. The, the other um, objective for me is to have not only infrastructure as code, but infrastructure to go. Like, I want to have my automation scripts on the laptop so I can work on it while being on the plane. And this also adds reproducibility um, because I'm just running exactly the same code on the laptop and on the big machines in the data center. And this is uh, reached by what Packer can do is uh, it works cross-host or even cross-virtualizer so you can just interchange uh, the, the same script between something like OS X with VirtualBox, uh, AWS with AMI images, and since this project, uh, you will be able to do that with OpenSD in VMM. So creating those images um, are usually something like, I didn't write out that one, but like you can do in VirtualBox application measure, export this machine as a new box. And typically it will begin that people write a shell script around VBox manager or something like that. So that's creating your own shell script. The worst version of that is you pull something from GitHub you have never seen before and just pipe it into SH. Or you have uh, those guys uh, doing that at night, and when uh, you need a, a new image, for example, there was some CVE and security problems, so you have to recreate the image. The guy is having a hangover or is on vacation, while well, nobody can do it. I was just adding that after yesterday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you can replace the shell script with Perl, <laughs> of course. Um, by the way, um, Ansible or something like that isn't the, the key thing here because we are talking about uh, virtualized bare metal, <laughs> so there's no Python yet, so you cannot do Chef, Ansible, whatever, but um, I will come to that at a later point where you can hook in, um, for example, Ansible. Yeah, well, and then Packer comes into play. Um, who knows? and is using Vagrant, or Vagrant, like I like it to say. 
Oh, there's not so many as well. Um, but this is um, background is just an abstraction layer for hypervisor management. And this is from HashiCorp. And Packer is also from HashiCorp. So in their very own description, you can, can read that yourself. I hope it's readable. OK. Um, Vagrant is written in um, uh, uh, Packer. <laughs> sorry. Packer is written in Golang. The very Packer core is only a communication proxy doing RPC within um, other code bases. So every actual thingy doing something you can see is a plugin, and it's talking via this um, core provider where RPC calls and then reaching um, the other plugins. Like, hey, I have finished something. Please, please take over and do, do your stuff. And the configuration um, for Packer is just one JSON file. And for the easy and typical cases, this is something like, I have an example later on, it's maybe like 15 or 20 lines maximum for the actually build description. But you can make it a bit more complex if you want to spit out um, images for like five or six hypervisors, uh, but it's not really a difficult format to understand. And you can have a second file, like a location or host-specific variables file, but that's optional. Options are good if they are optional. So uh, every toolkit, whatever, comes with its own terminology. And I will go over that uh, quickly because that's important when I'm just saying like, oh, there's a template. Yeah, well, what could that be? Because everybody's understanding something different given only the noun itself. So Packer speak is artifacts which are the, the resulting image files that the hypervisor can directly consume. Um, a build, a running build, is just um, the plugins and the core doing its thing to create artifacts. The builders are the actual code base that will be run to have a build and then creating an artifact. Then there are provisioners, like after spinning up the VM, and the builder can then do its thing to bring up the VM. Um, launching um, or let launch the kernel, and if you want to do additional custom customization, which is the main point here anyway, so uh, you can hook in just maybe something like two or three lines of uh, shell script, like package at Python, <laughs> and you can then also uh, go and call within Packer say, oh, please use Ansible and this and that uh, playbook provided from over there, or you hook in Chef and all that. There are way more. That's on the next slide. And then there's post-processing, which is actually tearing down the VM, like in VirtualBox terms, like exporting it, and then making a touchyz file with the raw disk device, um, depending on the hypervisor, uh, OVF, uh, XML files, and all that. Whatever is needed that you have a valid virtual box box or uh, AMI image to be used in Amazon Cloud and all that. And templates in Packer Speak is, that's just a configuration JSON. It's not like you're having um, a VM image as a template you will be modifying because many other things in this area will have the terminology that a template is just uh, an image you are modifying. So uh, as of at least some weeks ago, those hypervisors are supported by the Packer as distributed by HashiCorp. That's a a lot of things already. 
including stuff I never have heard of before, like profit bricks. Whatever. <laughs> um, and since uh, the whole package structure is uh, plugin based anyway, um, it's very easy to add uh, additional builders. And you can just pack them in, in some, I think it's like three, uh, three directories where a packer will look for um, legitimate plugins, you could call. And besides that many, the third party world, I think this list goes on for maybe another 20 or something. So more or less everything out there doing hypervisor stuff is already supported. What was missing? VMM. So uh, I think it was in Bucharest where Antoine was approaching me like, hey, you're doing all this background stuff. Uh, please add OpenBSD VMM support to Packer because Packer itself was already ported to OpenBSD and you can use it right now uh, to create Amazon images you are doing there. <clears throat> um, so after the bringing up the VM and doing, let's say, the auto install features of, of the operating system itself, like auto install in OpenBSD or Kickstart in anything Red Hat based or all this uh, stuff. You can also hook additional provisioning, which has a built-in support, like distributed uh, of those things. Even here, I learned something new, like breakpoint, uh, breakpoint and masterless. Like just another uh, not invented here thing or something. And of course, you can add third-party provisioners as a plugin as well, but that's not covered here because we are, or I was uh, concentrating in this area. Uh, on the OpenBSD side, everybody knows OpenBSD. Oh, not everybody. <laughs> But I was uh, uh, adding this here for reference and completeness. Uh, completeness. So you have the, the kernel side of things, you have a, a userland daemon handling um, the VM, and a userland uh, CLI to start and stop the VMs and all that. And a configuration file you do not necessarily need, but if you want to persist your configuration, and I think uh, switch setups are only possible with vm.conf. Yeah. But I'm not, not using switch as of now, so I don't need that. Um, one concept in Packer is baked in already. It tries to use at the least privilege needed. That's a nice thing. And if it needs privilege for doing whatever, uh, it will by default called sudo, but that won't be any good any longer on OpenBSD, but do as support is not a problem. <coughs> Sorry. Um, there's only one thing, I will be talking about the details in a bit. Um, while Packer is handling the build, you cannot access the terminal, so you cannot type in a password it would be possible to do something like ask pass password up front and then pass it into the session. But if this is running longer than five minutes, the credential will time out and you would have to type in again and that's impossible. So you have to have a do as configuration This uh, works with no pass because persist timeouts too early. Um, <clears throat> Typically, um, if you are installing, doing a custom build, auto install, you will need to reach out, well, at least farther than the host you are building on. So on the host, you need a PF configuration like that for the domain resolution. And the actual um, uh, HTTP requests making happen to fetch down new packages or whatever configuration service you need. 
So and since we are using NAT, we need IP forwarding enabled. And of course, you have to start VMD. That's all the dependencies you have uh, before you can use uh, Packer with this plugin I've written. So uh, we have kind of a stage here. So it's not, not like in Tokyo where you can just rush over there. And uh, so if you have questions, um, we are doing that at the end of the talk. And I will be in the hallway for the next hour. <clears throat> uh, ne needs in terms of tooling and space for developing Packer plugins, all of them, um, is you need Golang, Packer, and Git, which are uh, easily available packages on OpenBSD, so that's a no-brainer. Uh, you, obviously, you need an editor of your choice. I was adding editor, not only visual, because of all that ad hype lately. Um, the Go dependency needed for this plugin uh, are around 1.5 uh, gigabyte, uh, and then it depends on what you are actually doing. Like, if you are making super lean images with one gigabyte root disks, you will need less space. If you're doing something with 100 gig, you will need way more, so that's obvious. Um, in, the, in the source layout, um, there are like two breeds in the Packer ecosystem. Like um, the one breed is doing everything in the, um, well, root directory of that repository but I think it's a bit nicer to have a make file, readme, and maybe the main entry hook in the root directory, but, well, hiding the dirty work somewhere else, like in the cellar. So I'm doing that in a subdirectory. And from the source files perspective, uh, just some simple make file to make things nice. Like, I'm even doing the presentation with make show. I have a presentation VM. It's on, oh, by the way, all the slides are on GitHub and all that. So, getting a link uh, on the last page. And even the presenting, the presenter VM and the presentation is all on GitHub. It's all self hosted, more or less. Well, I'm not hosting GitHub, but get an idea. So the make file can do uh, building the plugin, install it in the corresponding directory. VMB is uh, building a test VM with that builder, uh, then format and wetting for um, um, uh, Go, let's say linting and formatting and all that. And yeah, while test clean uninstall is uh, speaking for itself. In the main Go source file, there's only like 10 lines or something like that, which is actually importing the builder into uh, the Packer world. Uh, and it will have a plugin type of server. So in, on the RPC side of things, you always have a server and a client. So this builder is a server connecting uh, to the core RPC. Um, run uh, go, go routine from, from Packer itself. It will register under its name. Like if you are having then a configuration that says uh, builder VMM OpenBSD, the RPC server has to have knows where is that plugin running in terms of RPC addressing. And then it will just uh, being invoked as a Go routine or in simpler Unix speak, uh, it's spinning around, so it's uh, acting more or less like a demon. <clears throat> um, config Go isn't about parsing, parsing the configuration because that is Packer doing for us already you only define a big struct where all the keywords and the value type are being defined, and that's all you have to do. Everything else is 
uh, more or less popping out of the JSON and other parsing stuff that the Packer core is already doing for you. Actually, it's a config plugin of Packer doing that for the core and communicating you the resulting data structure into your plugin. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Buildergo itself will be doing, well, the, the rough groundwork for all of it, like bringing the code into life anyway, using the configuration struct into uh, your running instance, like in your build. So the builder is populating the build with config. Um, and then run a tokenized build structure. You will see that with steps on the next side, what's happening over there. And yeah, well, of, nicely you can cancel it, which is nice in that way that Packer is doing, if you're doing, doing multiple artifacts, like you are building from the same build, post-processing into Amazon, Google Cloud, VirtualBox, and whatever, it could take ages, and you can cancel the build, and Packer won't just shoot the routines in the head, like uh, Kill-9 or something like that, but it will first signal over RPC, hey, please stop cancel, and then um, you can have code. When this cancel comes, it's like you are doing in, in the C world, um, just having a trap handler for six stop. So you can actually do cleanup when a cancel happens. Uh, Sick board. Uh, Driver go, and you can name that whatever you want to, but uh, it's, if you want to have a community around it, well, use this terminology and find them so people know where to look into what for. <clears throat> so the driver holds the code that's actually doing more or less shell exec or something. In, in this case, it's like spitting out the needed VM CTL call with minus capital L, minus whatever needed disk images over here and all that. Um, I will talk about this fix me uh, on the Outlook f uh, future and whatever page. Um, because that's still a bit of a problem here to, to get the IP address needed for the so-called boot command. So when Packer build starts, the builder is instructed to um, launch the VM via VMCTL with a connected serial console. And this serial console won't be connected to your terminal, but to a Packer internal uh, TTY handler. And Packer is then able, I have a demo of it, to type in commands like, um, if you're old enough and remember an expect or something like that. So you can interact with, with that and Packer is doing this. I have only to press one A or so. Leave it to the machines. <laughs> and there are several step, whatever goes. Go files. And it's just depending what you are actually doing. Uh, so um, splitting it up that massively into single files, which are then uh, like out, out there is probably only like 15 lines or something, might look a bit, uh, yeah, well, spending a lot of effort for no real gain, but it's, it's the way the Packer community is doing this, so just follow the herd. Well, yeah. Otherwise, you are annoying as a service, as we have learned. So out there is creating just, just MKDIR and checking permissions and all that, and then creating a disk with a VMCTL, um, create in QCOW or RAW, whatever you uh, have defined in the configuration JSON. 
get vm params holds cold, uh, code um, to retrieve information and put it in a so-called uh, state bag. This state bag is only, uh, let's say, alive while the build is running. And it's a possibility that all those plugin components can write into like a temporary configuration buffer. So you can write into it, like it's put, and then you can, from, a, from another, um, wherever you are, you can get this information. So you have a config passing, which um, is there for the reason that Packer is doing parallel stuff, and you don't want to pass this information via function parameters or something like that. You write the information into a bag, and then multiple functions, when they need it, can read it from there. And that's the main difference to just having a function call with 20 arguments or something like that. Um, so launching the VM is via the driver, VM CTL start, obviously, and doing all that. Uh, right now, especially for debugging per, uh, purposes, if the startup doesn't work because maybe you, you ran out of RAM on the, on, on the laptop or wherever, um, I'm not yet having the necessary cancel code to shoot down the VM properly, like, you know, pickle and all that. So um, it's not happening that often, and I'm just right now leave the VM running so I can connect to it, analyze it, whatever, and not just shooting it away, and then you have difficulties um, to do a post-mortem analysis of what what happened, what did, what did go wrong. Boot command is doing um, exactly that thing I was already talking about, like you have a keyboard typing machine that Packer provides. And in the early days, people have been using that, um, having a boot command with something like a hundred lines or, or that, like running the installer in interactive mode, and in, instead of typing, this is my host name, whatever, you can do that in the boot command uh, array. But that's super tedious, because if, well, something is not quite right, um, especially on the timing part of things, like, Packer can type very slowly, but it cannot type very fast. It's a bit crazy, and uh, while well, it wasn't only one build that failed because boot command was typing too fast or too slow or the wrong thing at the wrong time. Uh, well, auto install to the rescue, obviously. Um, there's one problem here. Packer will run up if you if you tell Packer to do it. Uh, Packer can run up a built-in HTTP, the server, which will serve files from its, from a con configured um, directory somewhere on the host. And it will run it on, whoop, on just some, some random high port north of 8000 or so. An auto-install isn't capable of that. So if you're doing um, a Pixie netboot with a DHCP-provided file name, auto-install, the shell script auto-install will happily run off. Um, ask the DHCP server, or is next server supported already? I don't know. No matter what. Uh, in the whole thing of that, there is no possibility to say something 
Uh, here, what, wait a minute, our install repository server is on a port different than port 80. Just doesn't work. So, I'm not doing in this plugin a real, a real or faked or whatever, if it would be functioning anyway, uh, Pixie based netboot auto install, but actually doing um, an interactive install by, from the way the VM is booting. And then the boot command only is configured, press capital A, plus passing this URL with the dynamic IP and port that is only valid for this very one build running. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, already there. <laughs> Demo time. Uh, like I said, the configuration isn't like uh, very complicated or something, just like names, disk size, uh, disk format, whatever, where, where to fetch the ISO image, either from disk, local disk, or HTTP, or whatever. And here's the thing with the boot command. Do auto-install, and here is the URL, and Packer will provide this variable to me, and no, I have to provide this variable by looking up a tab interface. And the port will be provided via the state back configuration. So some plugin elsewhere will write this information into the back and I can read it. So the demo here, the auto install demo cast is within the repository as well, so you can just replay that. Is that readable yes. down there? Okay, cool. Oh, hang on. Clear it first, so. Um, so I'm using this uh, as cinema, which is a really, really nice tool to um, record uh, terminal sessions. So this is, um, This is just a, a little HP microserver sitting in our office, so this, this is lab time. Um, I'm doing this right here because serial consoles can only be connected once. So I need a serial console within Packer itself for boot command. If you do a second session with screen or CU or tip or minicom, whatever, connecting to the same serial console, yeah, well, fireworks. Actually, you know, it's more like dark black, dark black hole because nothing will happen anymore until you kill the VM and all that. So I'm writing from Packer into a log file and I'm tailing that instead of having the serial console output here. So just pack a build and your JSON file. And Packer will print a nice greenish color. Yeah, I know, no colors. Uh, creating the disk image, that, that is what out there and all that is doing, bring up the VM and then you just have uh, OpenSD booting uh, itself. Uh, here, this built-in HTTP server is starting up and now you see, oh, it's uh, just here. The, I, uh, it's the first ID and boot wait f is a parameter for the boot command, how long to wait until you should do that. It should be dynamically waiting for the question instead of waiting a fixed time, but one thing after another. And here you have to think, I'm typing in A for auto install. It will try to boot, uh, to fetch it from port 80, but it doesn't work. And the fallback is to ask for the URL again. And this is where Packer is typing in the URL, and then it's fetching the install isoconf, uh, auto install configuration file. And then auto install is doing what it's doing. Um, one thing with this mylog is, you will see there is no 
progress bar here until it's finished. This is because this TTY catcher waits for a line feed. So it's not printing every character by its own, but when the line is finished, it pops up at 100%. So this is time-lapsed. The first time I was doing that, like, shit, nothing happens. And then suddenly, it continues. <clears throat> Yeah, all this uh, just standard auto-install stuff. Uh, and then we have, uh, the installer will try to reboot, but in this case, it will actually fail to reboot because it has no idea what it was running uh, just before. So actually, it's convenient because I need a stopped VM to export it anyway. So it's rebooting, but actually saying rebooting, but it's actually stopping the thing. Yeah, and then you have a 900 Mac, nice, nicely usable image. Hello. So status, you have seen what it can do. All the basic, basic stuff is there. Wow, getting a lag here. So it's only two pages, no worries. Um, all, the, all the basic needs are there. The only thing is um, battery dying, I don't know. Is the function get tab IP address. Um, if you want to have details about that, as I said, I'm in, in the hallway, the problem is uh, Packer needs to know the IP address of the host's tab interface where it will be, where it is binding uh, the built-in HTTP server, and right now I have some assumptions in the code about something, and assumptions is the mother of all fuck-ups, so I have to fix that. And future plans, oops, would be like having a disk label configuration option multiple disks, more networking, and all that, that will be something for next year. And damn you. Integration, making Packer itself, uh, the Packer Builder plugin or, or, or package ports, and the same thing with uh, Vagrant, and then creating more or less a little bit of an ecosystem, and uh, maybe some read me about how to integrate that with our domains and then using Relady on the outside and all that. And the other day you will have Puffer Launch, which will be cloud on your laptop with OpenBSD only. So the slides are on GitHub. This is uh, just static uh, location leader. It all started, so the idea was coming from Antoine in Bucharest, but actually hacking started in Glarus. Uh, VMCTL minus capital B to fake I'm a netboot. The idea of that was developed in, in Glarus as well, and Claudio was taking it into the, into the gang, and then something like minus capital B happened, and that's very convenient even if you are not using Packer, and that's all good. Grubernaut helped me with uh, some Go stuff and adding ISO and QCAL support for the disks. Multi-disk support will be the next thing, or growing file, uh, file systems and all that. So I think questions will be a bit of a problem time-wise. Okay, so here's the URLs. Like I said, presentation, it's all online. And thank you, open for questions, five minutes, whatever. Nobody? Ah, oh, come on. Misha, you have questions. <laughs> it's all clear. Um, okay, can you hear me? Okay, um, so you were talking about Pufflench, right? Have you tried to do like a queuing system for if you need, for example, multiple machines at once? Um, uh, you don't need to do that because Packer is absolutely capable of it. Okay. It was in the, in the internal description. Like, Every step of those five 
major steps in a Packer build mm -hmm. will be run in parallel by default. Packer will be taking care of it, so you do not need to you have your own kind of queuing paralli parallelism. That's why it, everything is doing RPC and not direct serialized calls. Okay, even for the logs and if you want everything. to use a database for keeping the yep. machines or something? Okay, thanks. Um, is there a special reason that um, you run the installation? Isn't it possible to uh, pack the image by itself? So just create an image and pack the install files into it directly? Instead of run the whole installation in a virtual machine? Why are there 10 religions? That's all the answer. Like, the, the one kind of breed is doing images and recloning them and modifying it, and the other breed is doing completely customized full builds. And this is about full builds. If you want to do it differently, use something else. I, I, I just ask uh, for the advantages you have if you ha do it this way, uh, because I, I try this uh, myself, but just for one specific cloud we have in our company, and there I um, uh, copied the, um, the build infrastructure of how um, install ISO is, uh, is, is done, and okay. I just ask what, the, um, what your advantages is uh, if you do it this way. Hang on. Um, if you have an AMI image or virtual box, box you are having this one box and then you clone or import it and you can still uh, manipulate, customize it. This thing is not about instantiating a VM, but building the underlying image. So you can customize the images up front or you're doing more or less a simple image, like just plain 6.5 install, like in the demo, and then while you are instantiating it with Amazon or Vagrant, then you can still have provisioning afterwards. So it's just a different area what we are talking about. Okay? Okay, thanks. Well, 